Okay, in this video we're going to find some partial derivatives, which sounds like it would be really difficult, um, but it turns out that it's really no harder than taking uh, derivatives that you learned in Calc 1. Uh, you just have to get used to uh, looking at certain things as constants instead of uh, seeing them as variables. So say we have um, f of xy is equal to 9x squared plus x cubed times y squared minus 3y to the fourth. So we have uh, one term here that uh, only has x as a variable, we have one term that has both x's and y's, and then we have uh, a last term that has only y's in, uh, as variables. Um, and that's going to be really important. So uh, the first partial derivative we want to take is um, partial x, so the partial derivative with respect to x. So um, partial x of f of xy, that's really annoying to write over and over, so there's kind of a simplified notation um, where you use a little subscript. So uh, we could write this, uh, and we mean the same thing. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to x, which means that every variable that you're looking at in f of xy that is not an x is actually just going to be considered a constant. So we're holding it constant. That's not allowed to change. And we're going to look at what happens when x changes. Um, so what you do uh, is you just kind of uh, look through and identify things. So in this term, there's no y value. So this is uh, what you're familiar with, right? Just find the derivative of 9x squared. So the derivative of 9x squared is going to be 9 times 2x. Plus, now we have to look at this middle term. So we have um, x cubed, right? That has x's in it. But then we also have y squared. y squared has no x's involved with it. So it's actually a constant. So it's as if you're taking the derivative of um, just k times x cubed here. So the derivative of that is going to be, um, so we got 3x squared and then just times y squared, right? Because y squared is just a constant as far as this problem is concerned. Um, and then we have this last term, so minus 3y to the fourth. There are no x's involved, which means that whole term is constant, and the derivative of a constant we know is zero. And you would want to kind of simplify this. So we get that. Um, and then we can also take the derivative with respect to y. So this is where it's a little different. So we have partial y. Um, using the same subscript. That's, uh, in my experience, it's more common to use the subscript notation. Um, so we want partial y. And so what we need to do is, I'm going to erase all that. In this case, if you look at the very first term, 9x squared, there are no y's involved. So that's a constant. So the derivative of a constant is 0. Now we look at the middle term, which again, it's, it's x cubed and y squared. But in this case, x cubed is the constant and y squared is our variable term. So that's going to give us um, x cubed times the derivative of y squared, so times 2y. And then uh, looking at the final term, we have minus 3y to the fourth. That has a y in it, so we're going to take the derivative with respect to y. And we get minus 3 and then 4y cubed. And we're done, so let's simplify that. So I tried to color code this one so that you could kind of uh, identify easily, I guess, if you were having trouble. Um, but obviously it's a lot faster to not do that. So let's take a look at another example. So if we just have um, our function f is a function of x and y, it's x to the eighth times y cubed. So if I'm going to find partial x, then um, what I'm doing is I'm going to take the derivative of x to the eighth, which is 8x to the seventh, and multiply it by y cubed, which is being held constant. And that's actually the derivative. And if I want partial y, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to take the derivative of y cubed and just multiply by x to the eighth, which is, for all intents and purposes, uh, a constant when you're taking the partial with respect to y. So I get um, 3 y squared x to the eighth, but then I've rearranged it a little bit. Uh, I want to do one more example that involves the chain rule, because uh, some people kind of struggle a little bit when they hit this, but as soon as you do a couple problems, uh, it makes a lot of sense. So if I want partial x for this function. Uh, first got to look at the function. So I have cosine of x times y plus x over y. So two different terms handle each one separately. So I need the derivative of cosine of something. So this is no different from calc 1. The derivative of cosine of something is going to be negative sine of that thing. So I have negative sine of xy times the derivative of that thing with respect to x. So times the derivative of xy with respect to x which gives me just 1 times y, so times y. Now I'm going to look at the second thing. So it's x over y, so x is the variable, and y is a constant in this case. So the derivative of 
x is 1, so I just get 1 over y. Um, because you could rewrite it as 1 over y times x, which might potentially help you take the derivative. Um, then I'm going to rearrange it. So, not so bad. Um, let's take the derivative with respect to y, so partial y. Okay, so it's still cosine of something, and then x is the constant this time, y is the variable. So it's going to be negative sine of xy times the derivative of xy with respect to y. So that's going to be x times 1, so just times x. And then looking at the second thing, um, y is the variable, x is the constant. It might help you to rewrite it as x times y to the negative first. And I'm just going to power rule on y here. So I'm going to get plus x times negative y to the negative second. Bring the exponent down, subtract 1. Um, and then I'm going to clean this up. So I get negative x sine of xy minus x over y squared. Um, so that's a bunch of examples of taking partial derivatives. They're really not that bad. Uh, you just have to get used to it. And uh, that takes a little bit of practice. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.